I have a George Washington played by a black guy. Boy, he's having fun. Uh, so what these characters do is educate Miranda to the real facts of that history. So uh, Miranda says, uh, what's happening? American Express, all the endorsements, prizes, tickets selling for thousands. President Obama. President Obama doesn't know much about history because he went to Harvard. Uh, so, sing my song. And the first lady, Michelle, she says, it's the best musical she's ever seen. Is that what it's come to? I thought I'd enjoy the success, but something's wrong. It doesn't feel right. Have I created state approved art? Like the Star Spangled Banner? Next time you sing uh, Star Spangled Banner, you get to that line and Land of the Free, Home of the Brave Land of Free, it was written by slave owners. <laughs> They're all hypocrites. So, uh, uh, Francis Scott Keys was a slave owner, Maryland slave owner, you know? But anyway, uh, I thought I didn't, uh, and then here comes Ben. Ben was owned by Angelica Scott. And Hamilton negotiated the return of the slave to his sister-in-law, Angelica Scott. So, but in the uh, Hamilton script, she's a abolitionist, right? And the sister, these are party girls. Sleep slept at two o'clock in the afternoon. They had other people working for them, potential servants, and you know, depleting themselves all day, trying to get hook guys like in Jane Austen. All these women, you know, their whole purpose was like to marry some rich guy. Matter of fact, uh, I, I, I got the complete works of her. Jane Austen and marriage is, is mentioned several hundred times. <laughs> complete works, Everybody, you know, really hit me over the head. But uh, what, you, what your destiny is. So anyway, um, her slave enters. Mr. Lynn, are you the man who wrote the play about Alexander Hamilton? Miranda, yes, and who are you? Ben. My name is Ben, Mr. Lynn. I'm the man who was returned to Miss Angelica Schuyler Church by Mr. Hamilton. Her. She was Hamilton's sister-in-law. She was also a freak. He handled the paperwork just as he did paperwork for the trading company that he worked for when a boy. His job with there was to process, process the arriving slaves. His job was to groom, when he was in the Caribbean, was to groom slaves to sell for auction, like their hair and their appearance. Like you, like Tennessee said, like grooming a dog for a dog show. She had leased me to a man named Major Jackson who wanted me back. I did all the work. She and Major Jackson got all the money. I was valuable to them because I was a carpenter and I could read and write. Unlike the scholars, Major Jackson didn't mind if I read a lot of books. Those scholars are evil people, Mr. Miranda. They worked their slaves to death. They fed them the same thing you feed animals. And those scholar girls you had dancing and carrying on were mean girls, Mr. Miranda. They treated their slaves like garbage. Their father, the founder of the New York Man Mission Society, was dipping his spoon in some of the chocolate, too, Mr. Miranda. Why else would one of the runaways from his plantation have been biracial? His name was Nicholas, a company called Claus Miranda. What the? I'm hallucinating. I don't follow. Alexander Hamilton was an abolitionist. Enter a black woman. Woman Ben's right, Mr. Miranda. Hamilton, the abolitionist. What kind of abolitionist would sell me and my son? We had little to eat, and my son was always suffering from malnutrition and coughing. Sometimes he'd pass out, and you give those useless scholar girls all those sweet lines. Life under those girls was no damn musical comedy, Mr. Miranda. They never clean up after themselves except at one o'clock in the afternoon, Mr. Miranda. And you call Eliza Schuyler Hamilton a princess? I bet if a relative of yours like Ben was held in bondage by somebody's family, you wouldn't be calling them no damn princess. You'd be called the police. <laughs> Eliza helped her mother manage the slaves, and she was responsible for their welfare. Yet she did nothing to interrupt her father selling them and punishing them and beating them. She and her sisters grew up in a household where slaves are whipped, where runaways were hunted down with dogs where one runaway, Diana, was sold south where she was murdered. Yet you had them on stage raising their clenched fists and vowing that all men are created equal. Those girls were submissive to men. Your hero, Alexander Hampton, married into this family, and he did their bidding. He negotiated the sales of the slaves. Miranda, but Ron Cherno said he did so reluctantly. His book is 800 pages long. Woman, reluctantly. They all said that. I'm working these slaves to death reluctantly. I'm breaking up these families reluctantly. I'm working to death reluctantly. I bet when George Washington signed the Pugitive Slave Act, he said, I'm signing this document reluctantly. Uh -huh. Then, 
1784, Hamilton's sister, my Angelica, wrote her sister Elizabeth that she wanted to slave me in return. Now, if Eliza was such an abolitionist, don't you think she would have refused her sister's request? Hamilton wrote to John uh, Chaloner, a Philadelphia merchant who conducted business transactions for Angelica's husband, and stated, you requested if Major Jackson will park with him to purchase his remaining time from Mrs. Church and send him on to me. Sometimes the slave owners would lease or rent their slaves out. This is what the scholar girl did, the scholar woman. Miranda, you must be mistaken. The scholar girls were the cream of New York society at the time. Woman, those girls are parasites, living off their father's money. Miranda, both of you mistaken. It was Hamilton who wants to end slavery. He's always opposed to slavery. He was a member of the New York Manumission Society, which his father, the long general scholar, founded. The two laugh. Woman, when Aaron Burr killed that cruel, hateful, stuck-up man, Hamilton, black people parted all night in New York. They say he was passing for white, too. He rejected his own kind in order to rise in white society. It was Aaron Burr who was the anti-slavery, Mr. Miranda. The way I looked at it, Hamilton, who got what's coming to him. Hamilton ranked cows, horses, and African people as interchangeable beasts. The way I look at it, a man like Hamilton, who saw human beings as property, got what was coming to him. You call this participating in a dual honorable? He left his family destitute. How is that honor? That may be heroic and patriotic to you, but people had to raise money to take care of him just because he got himself involved in some silly macho stuff. When New York outlawed slavery, a lot of these people couldn't go to balls and picnics while slaves and indentured servants did all the work. They were broke. Randall would draw and Chiano then. You don't get it, do you? He's all right, instantly. <laughs> Ron Cherno is doing the uh, correspondence dinner tonight instead of the comedian. He's a comedian. I mean, yeah, you know, they got a comedian anyway. Okay. Uh, that's New York Times chasing him down at the cocktail party. That's him about my $1,000 reading. He can he ran. Okay. <clears throat> okay. You know, Cherno is like a public relations man whose clients hire him to make even scoundrels look good. That's how he makes a living. I'm surprised that he hasn't written a book in which George Washington ascends to heaven and takes over God's job. Brandon, I read his book. I based Hamilton on his book. It's 800 pages long. Woman, you should have read books about black people. See how they felt. These white historians don't even give me a name. I'm merely called Negro Woman with Child. Then. <laughs> they are a little more than tarnished removers. They remove all the crud from the reputation of the founding fathers and apply polish until these reputations go like a wax floor. When Major Jackson had me bound over and sent to Hamilton to be turned over to Mrs. Church, Hamilton didn't even say nothing. He didn't even look up at me. Fill out some papers. Okay, return to Major Jackson. Told the men whose custody I was in to take me away. Okay, and then the Native American uh, man and woman enter. We have a Native American actor who's about seven feet tall. <clears throat> man, at least you made the cut. Chairman Holly mentions us, yet the theft of Native man was Native land was the main issue of the day. George Washington justified the seizure of Native man land, excuse me, on the basis that we are beasts. He said that there's no difference between us wolves and a deer. Matter of fact, George Washington said the only difference between an Indian and a deer is the difference in form. So they came over here believing these people were beasts or so they have it. You remember uh, Remember Robert Frost wrote a book saying that, uh, or a poem saying, The Gift of Outright, oh, yeah. that uh, there was nothing, nothing happening here when they, they arrived. It was empty. Beasts and deer, or Indians. Hamilton and Washington were all grabbing land that belonged to Indians, as they were called those two by their contemporaries. Even if were, but anyway, I'll skip a little bit. Uh, I, I found a letter by Hamilton written in 1791 that congratulated a vigilante mob for entering a Native American settlement and murdering men, women, and children. Hamilton. Because he considered, uh, Native, they considered Native Americans to be savages. If you think they're savages, go over to the Detroit Institute of Art and look at Native American art and tell me that they're savages. But any, you know, in your city. Anyway, uh, let's see, David, David uh, Rufus Davis. Uh, even Kit Carson, the hero of film, history, books, and television had more enlightened attitude toward Indians. He only killed the men. He spared the women and children. Uh, Washington and Hamilton and his Dutch relatives saw us as getting away in progress, but what kind of progress happened since they invaded our lands? When the invaders arrived here, 
There was near zero carbon emissions. Look at the country today, a carbon shithole. He was a savage. And all those pl those lines in your play about New York, matter of fact, they revised the play. And they, at one point they, in the play, uh, the musical, they, they sing, New York is the greatest city in the world, you know? But it says, uh, all these lines you happen to play about New York, about New York as the greatest city in the world, about how one could become a new man in New York. Well, maybe for Hamilton it was a wonderland. By the time he arrived, a whole bunch of Native Americans were massacred. The Dutch were the cruelest of all when it came to the destruction of Native people. On February 25th, 1643, the Dutch entered a settlement of Lenape people and murdered them while they were asleep. Some were thrown in the river. Children five to six years old were drowned, as well as the elderly and decrepit. Those who hid were discovered and burned alive. Just another example of their cruelty. Okay, now I'll go to, uh, this goes on. Actors are saying, these lines are too long. <laughs> you know, why don't you edit some of the lines? We can't move all of them. I said, we're trying to educate, you know what I mean? 